but now that he's been in office for a while, it's obvious that he is very tight with the Goldman Sachs and JP Morgans on Wall Street, and he is extremely compliant and pliant to the wishes of the large banks going back to he's not doing anything to stop the banks he's helping the banks continue to do what they were doing under bush so in fact he's just a continuation of bush of bush on the subject of markets and finance which is the most important part of his policy right now the right left uh, paradigm in the u.s and in, in u.s politics is taken directly from the commercial world and the, the corporate world in the business world you have coke pepsi you have mcdonald's burger king you've got at t and verizon you know, you've got duopolies, and a duopoly gives the illusion of there being some competition. The Who are you? Overall strategy is failed because we have not seen any change in behavior among Iraq's political leaders. And that is the essence of what we should be trying to do in Iraq. That's why I'm going to bring this war to a close. That's why we can get our troops out, our combat troops out within 16 months. So, so the notion that somehow because we've gone from horrific violence to just intolerable levels of violence and that somehow that justifies George Bush's strategy is absolutely wrong and I'm going to bring it to a halt when Thank I'm you. President of the United Thank States. Thank you. is really the, it's much bigger than an economic collapse. We're looking at the decline of Empire America. It's been long in the making, but now it's being accelerated with these programs of stimulus packages, bailouts, buyouts, government takeovers. And now it's become a place for the too big to fail. The policies being put in place are not going to work. Look at the unemployment numbers as your poll is looking at. The Obama administration said before the stimulus package that we had to vote on this because if we didn't, we were going to see unemployment hit 8% in 2009 and then it was going to peak at 9% in 2010. Well, voila, it's already at 95 the people are getting mad. They're saying they're ready for revolution. So, because the globalists are committing revolution against us. They're overthrowing our country, our Bill of Rights, our Constitution. It, 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 it's, everybody is waking up to the lies. Everybody knows everything Obama says is a lie. They hoped he wouldn't be a liar like Bush. They found out he is. to save the U.S. from bankruptcy. What are your thoughts on this and other parts of the budget? Well, Max, the, uh, the Obama budget is just uh, a continuation of the bailout of the, of the gangsters on Wall Street. The problem is that had Obama done the right thing when he first took office, mm. all of the pain would have been behind him now. of this, this new video of Michelle Obama a few weeks ago slipping up and saying his home country, his home country of Kenya. And his grandmother's on record saying he was born there. But regardless. Uh, Barack has led by example. Uh, when we took our trip to Africa and visited his home country in Kenya, uh, we took a public HIV test. Uh, when we took our trip to Africa and visited his home country in Kenya. You know me long enough that I've said the same things and voted this same way for right. many years. And they told me that when I first started running for Congress. There's no way you can run on that platform and, uh, platform and run. You're, you're just sort of uh, obsessed with this Constitution, you know, and you yeah. live in the dark ages. You can't be elected. So I was elected 11 times. In you won in this district. But, Congressman, I want to ask you, could you win nationally? Again, do your views have a majority of support in the United States of America that would allow you to get elected president? If you were the Republican nominee, could well, you beat Barack Obama? My appeal is to a lot of independents and a lot of progressive Democrats who are sick and tired of Obama for, you know, opting out of uh, cutting back on some of this militarism. He's a warmonger. He's expanding the war. So unfortunately, after 9-11, the Republicans became the warmongers and said that we have to fight war endlessly. And so, therefore, we didn't have a Republican 
Republican leader that would challenge the Democrats on the war. Right now, you need a Republican that will challenge Obama on the war issue and on civil liberties. Here's an administration that has endorsed assassinations. He still endorses secret prisons. He, he loves the Patriot Act. I'm